Hey there, Synth Drones. Today we're going to be talking about synthesizers and endless tweaking. Hi, I'm Pierre Media Drone. This is my channel where I talk about synthesizers. Hit the subscribe button and tap that bell to encourage me to keep doing these videos for you because it is an encouragement knowing that you're watching. And you can also keep up at patreon.com, digging deeper, forward slash pure ambient drone. That's patreon.com forward slash pure ambient drone if you want some extra stuff that you won't see on this channel. Well, uh, JC Selector commented uh, on one of my videos that he had a problem, and that is endless tweaking and depression doesn't help that. So basically, his question is, what's the point of finishing a song? Um, first of all, I want to make a little disclaimer here and say that uh, endless tweaking on synthesizers is not a bad thing if that's what you want a synthesizer for. Um, synthesizers are to make noise with, okay? I have uh, several guitars, and I don't make any music with them anymore. I used to a long time ago, but I fell out of love in actually recording uh, guitar. I enjoy just playing guitar and relaxing with it and not making anything creative, just making noise with guitars. Synthesizers for me is a different story for some reason. I can't explain it. It's just a part of me. Uh, when I pick up a synthesizer, well, not pick up a synthesizer, but when I go to a synthesizer and I start playing on it, I'm more interested in making finished tunes, but that's probably just how I'm wired when it comes to that instrument. So, um, because everybody is different, this is not an easy question to answer. Now, uh, JC Selector goes on to say that he does a lot of jams with his uh, synthesizers and his gear, and uh, he posts them on YouTube. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. Now, he, he does ask the question of what's the point of making a finished song? Uh, again, this is a real hard question to answer. Uh, if this is not your goal, if you're just one of the types of persons that likes to play with your gear and enjoy your synthesizers in that manner, you are already getting your fulfillment out of them. I tell people over and over again that the things that we own are meant to give us enjoyment, okay? Uh, we purchase and own things and obtain things because we either have a need for them and or a desire for them. And synthesizers can become a need, okay, if music is your profession and uh, that's what you do and you make money off of it. But they can also become a want. Now, if you're not into music production because you don't need a synthesizer to produce finished tracks with to make an income or uh, at least try to make an income of any sort, then uh, your synthesizers can be a toy that you can play with. Uh, they can also be something that you jam out with in a band locally. And of course, even there, you can make money in a band with your synthesizers uh, playing covers. I know a couple of uh, musicians that actually never write songs. I, I knew a guitar player, getting back to guitars, uh, this guy was a proficient guitar player, absolutely incredible, he could play anything, but never wrote a song in his life, and his, his life was cut short. Unfortunately, he died young, but in that whole time of his 32 years on this earth, I'd never known him once to ever finish a song. He had no desire to do so. In fact, when I was younger, would hang out with him a lot over at his house. And I was always like, write a song. Let's write a song together. Let's do a song. And he would have nothing to do with it. He just did not want to do that. So that's just how some people are. But um, let's look at the other uh, point that he was making. The other concern was depression. And I think depression, uh, and I hear this a lot in, in the synth drone world, but I, I also hear it other places too. Don't get me wrong. It's not the only place that I hear it from. Depression is a very, very real thing. And um, I never, never tell people not to go get help with depression, okay? If you feel that you need to get help with depression, by all means, uh, seek professional help with depression. Uh, I, I think that everybody in their life, if you live long enough, you're going to suffer some form of depression. 
And depression can be brought on by many different things. And I don't know what J.C. Selector's depression is all about. Now, remember, I'm only going by the comment that he left. So um, not knowing what kind of depression he has, and I'm by no means any kind of a doctor that you want to, I'm not a doctor at all. So I, I don't have any answers for that. But I can tell you what works for me. And this is interesting that he asked this question because normally, you know, I, I don't just jump on a video a uh, topic like this because somebody commented it has to be something that I experience myself or I'm dealing with so um, I can tell you what, what what works for me and I can tell you some of the things that I catch myself doing when it comes to tweaking I have got to watch myself about tweaking a finished song I will work on a song endlessly after it's done and I will tweak it and play with it and try out different plugins. It's crazy what I do. And I think, unfortunately, plugins give us way too much leniency uh, in the mix to where we can just, oh, well, I don't like plugin A. Let's try plugin B. You don't have to re record anything, just throw a plugin on it and it alters your sound completely from the other plugin. And I'll find myself saying, Oh, does this sound better? Does that sound better? Oh, great. They both sound fantastic. Now, what am I going to do? Uh, so I do find myself doing that. And I have to discipline myself. I have to say, Look, this is good enough. I have to get done and move on to the next. So that's what I have to do. I have to discipline myself. Depression, do I suffer from depression? I don't know if I suffer from depression. I wouldn't call it that. Uh, I do get things on my mind, okay? I get stressed out like everybody else does. I have deadlines to meet. I have situations that I have to deal with in life like everybody else does. I don't have a whole lot of time to do videos as much as I'd like to do. Um, I used to spend hours setting up videos. I talked about this in my last video. You know, wanted to get the lighting just right, wanted to get the cameras just right, wanted to get everything just right. Now, you know what, I just, I just throw the, the videos out there raw, keeping it real. And it works for me. I hope it works for you. I love coming up here and talking with you guys. And uh, I have to deal with situations with the time allotted to me in a day because there's only 24 hours and you have to sleep for some of those hours, right? So what I do, and, and this is really funny that he mentioned this today because I was thinking about doing a video like this. I actually use construction of music, okay, putting a music track together to combat sinking into depression. I've noticed that when I sit around too long and I've got nothing to do but stressful stuff, that I will find myself sinking into stress-related depression, all right? And so for me, when I uh, put together a whole piece of music that's a finished track, and then I complete tracks to go with that, and that's called an album, by the way, right? Uh, when I complete an entire album, I feel a sense of accomplishment for myself, all right? And then the greatest gratitude, of course, the most exciting part is when synth drones like you guys watching today actually check me out on Spotify and Amazon and iTunes and Google Play, hint, hint, guys, and uh, purchase my music. Uh, it's very gratifying knowing that you're on the right track because somebody bought your tracks. And uh, the enjoyment that I get from that, by the way, is the fact that uh, I moved somebody emotionally with my music enough to get them to pull the trigger to uh, purchase something that I created from my heart. Now, I will tell you this. When I make music, now I'm not talking about tweaking on um, the synthesizers and the gear playing around all for hours and stuff because I really don't enjoy doing that. Um, I don't. I don't know why, but I don't like doing that. Um, but when I do finish a track, when I do finish an album, when I do get it accomplished, um, and, and I'm in the process of working on that, it takes me to a different level. It takes me to a different world. It gives me a different perspective. It gives me a different focus. Um, you know, I have to put together a plan to get an album out. I have to put together a plan to get a whole track done. And that keeps my mind focused on that. But it's an enjoyment for me. And I find that it helps me not sink into depression because I, um, <clears throat> I suffered a divorce in 2005. And I went through a period of time where I did not want to be with, um, I didn't want to be in a relationship, okay? Uh, 
I, uh, I was depressed immensely, but I, I had a lot of stress on me too. I had a lot of things that I had to deal with, not just divorce related, but life related. Okay. I was a single dad suddenly and uh, my whole life changed and I gave up music for a long time and I was stressed. I was more stressed than I could even imagine and more depressed. But you know what? When I started doing music again and started writing music and enjoying music and finishing something, uh, it gave me a reason to get up in the morning because in the past I would, uh, man, I would just like go to bed early and get up late. And I didn't want to get out of bed because it's like, what's the use? I just got problems to deal with today. There's nothing to look forward to. And, um, the only instrument that I had during that period of time was my guitar. And I, like I said, I, I never really liked writing songs on guitars. I, I, I have wrote songs on guitars and finished them, but I never released anything out there in the world with it. Um, so that wasn't a motivation for me. Um, prior to my divorce, I did a lot of music and I had released a lot of music under a different name that I'm using now. And all of that was taken away from me. And, you know, I, I fooled myself into believing that uh, I no longer needed that all of that, that I was moving to a new stage of my life. But when I got remarried uh, a long time after my divorce, um, it seemed like a long time for me anyway, I, um, I rediscovered music. I rediscovered music and I rediscovered making music. And, uh, you know, I, I came to my, my wife and I said to her, you know, I want to go back into synthesizers. I, I want to get one and I want to see what uh, I can do with it again. And she was 100%, uh, you know, supportive. Now, here's the thing. Not everybody has somebody, uh, let alone if they do have somebody, not everybody has somebody that they live with that is supportive. And so I, I, I try to tell people all the time who come and talk with me about things. And believe me, a lot of people come to talk with me about stuff. I guess maybe I'm a good listener. Um, I try to tell them, you know, if you're single, please find somebody who, uh, who will put up with your loves uh, for the love of the things that you have. And what I mean by that is, you can't always find someone who's going to love the same things that you love, okay? Uh, but you can find people who will tolerate what you love. And I just want to make this uh, one point. When I was married before, I was married to a woman who was jealous, literally, of my synthesizers. She was jealous. And it wasn't because I spent a lot of time on them. It was because I spent any kind of time on them. She had a problem with loving uh, or, or, or tolerating anything that I loved. And it took the enjoyment out of whatever I owned. If I spent any kind of time whatsoever doing anything with something other than her or someone other than her, uh, she couldn't tolerate that. And I'm married to somebody now who does tolerate my time here in the studio. And I balance the time. And she is wise enough to understand that when you're married and you live in the same house, you can't be around each other 24 hours a day without getting into some kind of burnout. So actually, this is good time for us uh, to have space. And it's enjoyable space. You know what I'm saying? We're in the same house. And uh, she has her hobby. She likes to play Facebook games. She likes to play those games on there. I can't stand video games. I used to be a video game engineer. Can you believe that? I hate video games. Now, I used to love them. That's strange, isn't it? I think that's called burnout because I made it my job. Which leads me to my last point. Sorry, I'm, I'm going over my 10 minutes. I, I try to keep things under 10 minutes. But, man, some of, the, some of these videos really come out like, you know, I'm like on a roll here. Um... You can burn out taking your love and your hobby of tweaking gear and just playing around and enjoying your instrument. You can burn out if you turn it into a job. Don't do that to yourself. If you're the kind of person that just likes to play with your synthesizers, that sounds bad almost. Um, keep doing it. 
<laughs> I sound like uh, this ain't coming out right, guys. I love y'all, but uh, don't take this the wrong way. What I mean is, is that if you enjoy your synthesizers just the way they are, don't try to look to the next person and say, well, they're making music, maybe I should too. And if I don't make music, maybe I'm wasting my synthesizer and I'm being selfish and I need to get rid of it because I'm not doing what they're made for. Yes, synthesizers are to make music, but you know, ultimately they were made to enjoy, okay? Does not the listener of your music that you make enjoy listening to it? And they're not making the music, they're just listening to it. And if you don't make music, and you're listening to the noise that you create with it, that noise, who's to say that's not music? Noise is music. It is to me, it can be. Noise can be noise, but it can also be music. And if you're enjoying the noise that it's coming, you know, that's coming to your ears through that instrument, guess what? You're making music to your ears, and that's all that matters. So ultimately, in your studio, you can tweak all the day long if that's what you want to do. You can play around with it all you want to, as long as you're having fun. The moment that it becomes a serious job, that you're waking up in the morning and going, oh man, I gotta go in the studio today, it's time for a break and a reevaluation of what you're doing in life. That's just my, my thought process for myself. But, that's what the comment section is for. What do you guys think about what I'm talking about today? How do you guys deal with depression? How do you guys deal with your uh, gear and your synthesizers? Uh, do you guys tweak endlessly? Do you have bad habits that you want to share here with us? And do you have any way of combating some of these bad habits? I'd love to hear from you. And so would people like JC Selector. And uh, I appreciate all of you guys commenting because you know what? We're all a family here. We're all in the same boat, so to speak. And uh, I appreciate you guys uh, subscribing and checking me out and supporting me over at Patreon.com. And please, look up my music because I think uh, some of my music would be enjoyable uh, for a lot of you guys out there that uh, just like to chill out a little bit and, um, you know, get a different flavor of music. But anyway, until next time, keep calm and synth on.